Read the Bible every day so you'll be full of faith. Welcome you to join Bible Links to read the entire Bible in two years. I believe God will bless you, He will lift you up, and your life will never be the same. The following is the English translation of Pastor Mong Wu's teaching on the book of Leviticus, chapter 26 to 27, translated by Ray. Read the Bible every day so you will be full of faith. So here we are reading Leviticus chapter 26 and 27. In the arrangement of the book of Leviticus, you might feel that these two chapters are additional because in chapter 24 and 25, we have talked about the feast of the Lord and also how to live in God's will. And in chapter 26, it's talking about blessing and all the curses. And in chapter 27, it's talking about God's deepest desire in towards us in his heart. So he put his deepest desire in the last chapter of the book. So through chapter 26 and 27, we have to see that even though from a logical point of view, you might feel that these two chapters are additional, maybe it should stop at the year of Jubilee, it should be the climax, but in chapter 26 and 27, it talks about a very important blessing and cursing is something that all the sons and daughters of God has to be very careful. And 27 is to tell us through offering to know God's heart, to know the differences between holy and common, clean and unclean, know how to differentiate in front of the Lord and how to know God's heart and how to be a priest that is after God's own heart, a priest that is actually serving. And then we will know through the feast and after all these things, God put his deepest desire in chapter 27. So he will tell us that his, it's not about offering. It's not just about redeeming the sin. It's not about the worldly need, but it's about to draw near to, for someone who is longing to cl be close to his heart. He gave his instruction to them. So let's look at chapter 26 from verse 1 to 2 and talk about a couple of things. The first thing is that you shall not make idols for yourself or erect an image. And the second thing is that you shall keep my Sabbath. And the third thing is to revere my sanctuary. So God, in the beginning, he started to repeat all the things in the past from chapter 1 to 25, a couple key points. If you walk in my statute and observe my commandments and do them, there are a couple blessings that I want to give you. And these seven blessings is something that you can pray to the Lord today. Lord, I want these seven blessings. May you give me these seven blessings. I will follow your commandment. I will value and see my wholehearted worship to you, one true God, as important. Lord, may you help me to revere your sanctuary, revere your guidance. I will keep the Sabbath and keep the feast of the Lord. So the first blessing in verse 4, that I will give you your rains in their seasons. So rains in their seasons means God's blessing, His grace and provision will come in their own due time and his grace and peace and mercy will follow us wherever we go we will bring God's presence his blessing and provision so your house will never be lacking he's the Jehovah Jireh he will always be with you that's the meaning of having rain in its seasons so we can pray to the Lord Lord may your pour out of the Holy Spirit and all your provision in the spirit and even our everyday life, our physical life will all be according to your time, your schedule to come to my life at its due time, to my family, to my city, to my church, to reign in their own seasons. And this is the first blessing that God wants to give. And the second blessing is that the land shall yield its increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall last to the time of the grape harvest and the grape harvest shall last to the time of soul. So rain is about rain, but the second blessing is telling that we are going to have abundance and harvest. So there will be the pour out of, of the rain and the provision from the land so that I have a lot of abundance. And also this abundance is more than enough and one abundance after the other. So that's why your threshing shall last to the time of your great harvest and the grape harvest shall last to the time for sowing. So even though the seasons keep changing, but God's blessings is one after 
after another. So there will be rains in their own season. There will be the rain from the former and the latter, and there will also be the harvest from the land. So this is the second blessing that you don't no need to be worried for your finance, for your food, for your retirement, for the money that is required for your kids to study, and even their housing, their place. God will have provision. And the third blessing is that and you shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land securely. And in verse six, I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. So the third blessing is that God will give us a huge peace. None shall make you afraid means that you can enjoy the rest from God's presence. Your spirit is not in anxiousness. There's no worry or fear. And so you can ask God for these three blessings. Sometimes for someone, even though they don't have any lacking, their finance, but they are worried about their kids. Some people don't worry about their kids, but they worry about their job. Someone don't worry about their job, that they worry about their relationship. Someone don't worry about their relationship, but they worry about the nation, the policies, the international situations. You know, there are many things that we can be worried about or be fearful. All the pressure, all the intensity. Oh, maybe there is a play, whether or not we will have get sick, whether there maybe there's a shaking in the finance, will we be impacted, whatever. So you can ask God for these three blessings. All the keys for, of these three blessings is that I fear God and I worship God, I keep his Sabbath, I revere his sanctuary, then God will give us these blessings. And the fourth blessings and I will remove harmful beasts from the land, and the sword shall not go through your land. So the fourth blessing is that there is no sudden threat. Any attack from the enemies is useless in me. Not just having peace, but we can also resist all the attack from the enemies. All the stale kill or destroys, they cannot enter into our life. Maybe you will say that, oh, there are some hereditary disease in my family line, or maybe the community that I'm staying in is not very safe, or maybe at school there will be some immoral education policy, or maybe some uh, car accidents, uh, disaster, sickness. But God says all these stale kill and destroy will not be in our life. And the fifth blessing is in verse six or seven and eight. You shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword. Five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall chase 10,000 and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. So the fifth blessing is that not just the enemies cannot come, but we will have the power to subdue all the enemies. Your prayer will be have authority and your declaration will have power. When you pray for others' illness, when you pray for others' peace, when you share the gospel, your words will have the power power and authority from the Lord. So also when we are united, five of us will chase after a hundred. It will have 20 folds of power and a hundred of us shall chase 10,000. That means we have 100 folds more power and authority. So all the enemy will fall before us. That means they fall under our truth, our authority. You know, tell the end time there will be many disasters or persecution and Satan will try to attack church with all their possibilities. But the son of God will have the authority when we pray in unity. Our prayer can shake heaven and earth. And our prayer can destroy all the all the scheme from the enemy and can release the captives and this is our sword our praise is our two-edged sword our prayer is our sword and we when we proclaim god's words it's also the sword of the holy spirit so today when we are praising when we give thanks then all the sorrow all the suffering will leave you can find your brothers, sisters, your church to pray in unity, then our church will be powerful in this land. And the sixth blessing, I will turn to you and make you fruitful and multiply you and will confirm my covenant with you. So verse 10 is to respond the previous promises about the abundant provision. I will, you will have old crop to eat and new crop will replace the old crop. We will have, have be fruitful and multiply is the sixth blessing that God give us. It's also an abundance and abundance in our men and the people, maybe it's your family, either you have one kid or two kids, but you will know that in the future, God will multiply our descendants in our from our family line, will be increasing in God's grace. And even your church will also be fruitful and multiply. The church that you are pastoring, as long as we follow God's words, then we will also be fruitful and multiply. And he will confirm his covenant with us. Some of us will have weaknesses, will have um, lacking, or someone might fall because 
things are our weaknesses. We might be deceived by the enemy or under attack. Maybe we cannot do it by our own strength, but God will confirm His covenant. His hand will guide us, will guide us to abundance, prosper, and guide us so that we will have our portion in the covenant to Abraham, to have portion in Christ, in the salvation from His precious blood. And our family will receive favor from father to son till thousand generation. So you know, many people will say that, oh, I saw that many, many Christian they believe for two generation, three generation, till the fourth generation. Many people lose their faith. The first generation has a lot of hunger. The second generation try to maintain. The third generation lead their faith. This kind of saying, this kind of curse, it will not happen in my family. It will not happen in my faith. You can ask God for this blessing, and the seven blessing in verse eleven to twelve. I will make my dwelling among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and you shall be my people. So we will be His people. This is our relationship with Him. It's not just about blessing, but it's also about our relationship with God. It's a unity, abiding presence, a loving relationship. It's the deepest blessing. So their families, all these seven blessings. Blessings are for the one who follow his commandment from chapter one to twenty five. Maybe sometimes you will think that it's a little bit boring, but if you really read it through, the from chapter twenty six, all these seven blessings is for us. You can ask God for these blessings. But after this, starting from verse fourteen till thirty three, God don't just talk about. Blessing. He also talk about curses. So here, these curses. There are five levels of curses. It's not five independent curses, but it's curses adding onto curses, one layer after another. So from verse fourteen, when you are reading, you have to know through these reminder, and then at, later on, we will see the history of Israelites, the history of the church. We are all actually in the same path. So in chapter twenty six, from verse fourteen to thirty nine, you can ask God, Lord, may you save me from these curses. May you help me so that my heart will closely follow you. Well, I will not fall back because of my connection with the world, because of the delusion from the finance, from the money, because of my weaknesses, from my natural self, so that I lost your blessing and enter into your curse. Lord, may you guard, guide me. So I, I will always walk in your will. Though I fall, I shall not be cast headlong. May you uphold my hand, guide me, protect me. Not just protect me, but also my children, my family, my descendants will all walk in your favor. So the first curse is from verse fifteen to seventeen. It's that I will visit you with panic, with wasting disease, and you shall sow your seed in vain. And in verse sixteen, I will visit you with panic. This visit means that God is sending a power, and this power is called. Panic! It will consume the eyes and make the heart ache, and we are bounded by wasting disease and fever, and the fruit shall be eaten by our enemies. So, and God will set His face against you, and you shall be struck down before your enemies. Those who hate you shall rule over you, and you shall flee when none pursues you. So it's so terrifying. It's the desolation, the panic, and even being persecuted, the uncertainty. It's all sent by God. It's sent by God. It's God's visitation. It's the first layer of curses, so it's very terrifying. So sometimes you might feel that oh, someone is living in this kind of situation, or if you feel that oh, me also have this insecurity for my future, I always have a lot of panic. I but you remember that the blessing from the Lord will not add sorrow to it, but sometimes we will ha have some sorrow or worriness about God's blessing to us. Will God just suddenly take that away? You sometimes then you can pray to the Lord like this: Lord, may you keep your Words. I will not try to grab on the blessing. I'm also not just worry about your curse, but Lord, help me to be always have the fear towards you to keep your Sabbath and feast. I will always fear you, and then so that I will dedicate myself to the work in the tabernacle in the sanctuary. Then God will remove all the weariness, all the fear in you, and it will. Take that all away, and also then your gospel can save people who are in this kind of situation from this out of it. And the second layer of curse from verse eighteen to twenty. And if in spite of this you will not listen to me, then I will discipline you again sevenfold for your sin. It's because of our pride and our power. So God will cut off all your needs, and I will make your heaven like iron and your earth like bronze. It shall not rain nor grow fruit in the land. Your Strength shall be spent in vain, and for your land shall not yield its increase, and the trees of the land shall not yield their fruit.
fruit. If that means no matter how hard you try, you will not receive the fruit. And the third layer of curse is that if you will strive, still walk contrary to me and will not listen to me, I will let loose the wild beast against you, which shall bereave you of your children and destroy your livestock and make you few in number so that your roads shall be deserted. And the fourth layer of curse, if by this discipline you are not turned to me, but walk contrary to me, then I also will walk contrary to you. And I myself will strike you sevenfold for your sins. So verse 25 and 26, I will send pestilence among you. So everyone will be under control. They cannot go out anymore. And 10 women shall bake your bread in a single oven. That means there is no oven and there's no food. Why would 10 women bake a bread in one oven that means there is no food at all and you shall dole out your bread again by weight and you shall eat and not be satisfied that means you are in an extreme lacking and the five, fifth fold of curses is even more terrifying from verse 27 to 33 because they don't have no food so till the end they will eat the flesh of your sons and your daughters and also because of idol worship god will no longer regard their offering and in verse 33 and i will scatter you among the nations and i will unsheath the sword after you and your land shall be a desolation and your cities shall be a waste and later on in lamentation also in the second kings you will see all these things you will see these five layers of curses one after another by the israelites they never repent and on, even till the last layer even god scattered them among the nations and they eat the flesh of their children they still do not repent so that's why we talk first talk about keeping sabbath revere god's sanctuary to worship the only one true god because these three things is very important and especially when you read second samuel first and second kings and first and second chronicles you will found that they are all worshiping idol they no longer worship the only one true god they change the feast they change the celebration they don't keep the sabbath let alone the sabbath year they no longer reveal god's sanctuary and they give offering at their own will they did not give the tithings and they even give the one with blemish so the israelites they stay in the land of canaan for 490 years they did not fear god they did not keep the sabbath so they were captive for 70 years so these 70s years is a payback for in the past that did not they did not keep the sabbath year so their families this is actually a very scary thing that sometimes when we remember some sin that we did in the past just like we previously shared about all the offerings when we suddenly remember we need to learn to repay we need to learn to apologize sometimes when we remember you have to ask god for forgiveness and mercy then that's why you we have to value and see sabbath as important value god's schedule his his timing, his feast of the Lord. Why should we revere the sanctuary? That means your serving is not casual because you are a priest. You shall not bear your sin and die. You shall not touch the dead. You shall not touch the unclean things. That means you you treat seriously for the people that God's love because he also loves us so much. So the blessing is from him, but all the curses is from him. So because he doesn't want the sin to hinder God's destiny inside us because we are called to be the glorious priest. So today you can ask God, Lord, may you help me to leave these five fold of curses will leave me, leave my family, leave my church, leave my cities. Because when the land was defiled, then the land will vomit the people out. So in these 70 years, indeed, they were captivated in Babylonian. Then the land of Canaan received its rest. So their families, if we don't live in front of God, my, our job, maybe when we are working in front of the Lord, even though it's like quote unquote serving or our prayer, actually they are all sinning against God. So may the Lord really help us to bring our heart back in front of Him, to remove any humanitarianism, any uh, things from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and remove all the competitions and jealousy and all our selfish ambition, our desire, so that we truly live in front of Him in truth, so that His blessing can fall us and all the curses can be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Jesus. And later on, when you read 39 from 40 to 45, God will give us a chance to return, even though there have 
five fold of curses already, but these curses is not to destruct the people completely. All the judgment is one is the desire to have his people to return back to the only one true God. So the first step is to acknowledge our own sin. And in verse 41, if then their uncircumcised heart is humble and they make amends for their iniquity, that means we acknowledge that we are due for all these punishment. You know, God says that only, but you know, sometimes we will feel that even when we are repenting, but we actually will feel that why should I repent? You repent just because we want God to remove all the punishment, but you do not realize that when we sin, we don't just sin against people, but we also sin against God. So we need to acknowledge our sin to truly humble our uncircumcised heart. Lord, may you forgive my ignorance and forgive my indifference. Even though I don't feel that I am wrong, but I also have to humble myself in front of you so that my conscience is blameless and it also help me so that whatever things that happen to me I will know that this is your best arrangement in your will and next in verse 42 then I will remember my covenant with Jacob I will remember my covenant with Isaiah and my covenant with Abraham I will remember the land and then God will bring them back I will not spurn them neither will I abhor them so as to destroy them utterly and break my covenant with them for I'm the Lord their God I will make my covenant again so they will be in front of me I brought them out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the nations that I might be their God. I am the Lord. So when God finished his blessing, he says, I'm the Lord. And when he finished his curses, he says, I'm the Lord. So this is God's heart. Either he's talking about blessing or cursing. He wants us to know that he is God. He is the Lord. He's the one who has the authority. So in chapter 26, it talks about curses and blessing. What is your choice? And next in chapter 27, it's a very special special chapter it talks about four kinds of offering to offer ourselves our family offer our animal our house our land so why are we offering these things didn't we talk about the offering before we talk about the five different offering and also we talk about the feast then why are we still talking about more offering but if you look carefully about chapter 27 you will find that this is not specific to the priest it's too specific for a group of people they really have the desire they love God to a degree that they are willing to give everything they have to the Lord. So they make this special vow. This vow is that, Lord, I have this desire. Is that not through the priest. I want to truly draw near to you to love you. The purpose is not just about the sacrifice. Sacrifice is just a mean to bring us in front of the Lord. And in chapter 27, the offering here is that God put his deepest desire in the very to the very last of the Leviticus after all the offering after talking about all the disease how to pray for those things uh, after talking about um the offering for the consecration talking about the feast the sabbath and in the end he tell us uh, give us a choice do you want blessing or curses and only after all these things chapter 27 is a deep words from God's heart uh, my children if you want to make this special vow to me to really love me and draw near to me even more if you are willing to offer yourself or your family it's not just an offering of your cow or your lamb it's not about the fine flower not about the pigeon but it's to dedicate yourself and your family your animal your animal means your finance your all the economy lord you are you rule over my finance all the belongings that i have i will no longer care if i no longer manage it myself I don't just give you the best, the firstborn, but I will give all my animal to you. And also about houses. At that time, no one is dedicating their houses. The only time when the property of housing is transferred is during the, the ju year of Jubilee. That was because my failure, my weaknesses, or maybe when a priest is being called to the sanctuary, so there is a transfer of the housing. But in the year of Jubilee, it will all be returned. But here, the houses is not just for the year of Jubilee, it, but I will don't wait until the year of Jubilee, but I want to dedicate my houses to you. I want you to dwell in my house, not just in the tabernacle, but also dwell in my house so that my house can host your presence. Your presence will not just be in the tabernacle, will not just be when we give the offering, but also will be in my house so that my house will be like the tabernacle. It talks about there are a group of people that are so fervent for the Lord that they're offering their, their land. It's about their job. Lord, may my job be 
after your heart that I dedicate my job to you, all the work that I have, the labor, all these blessings. Yes, Lord, I want these blessings in chapter 26, but I want these blessings as you yourself. So I'm willing to offer all the fruit from my land, all the first, more than just the first fruit and offering. I'll give everything that I have from this land to you. So in chapter 27, first verse 2, if anyone makes a special vow to the Lord. So this special vow is a deep vow for the desire for the Lord. This vow is that some group of people that just offering sacrifice cannot satisfy them anymore. Even when they um, be the priest, they kill the, the cow, the oxes, and the lamb, in, enter into the tabernacle, they still don't feel satisfied. They want to have a true union with the Lord. So in chapter 27, it's a deep desire in God's heart. He put it in the last chapter because he wants the one who truly loves him, truly wants to draw near to him. He give them this way. This is a special vow so that they can enter into the tabernacle to serve. They offer up everything to the Lord. They truly touch God's heart. And in from verse 2 to 8, you will see that you can dedicate yourself to and your family to the Lord, but there are different valuations that men and women have different valuation. And for the for the young adult, for the youth, for the children and people older than 60, they have different price. And even for the poor person from verse 8, if someone is too poor to pay the valuation, then he shall be made to stand before the priest and the priest shall value him. The priest shall value him according to what the vower can afford. So you have to know that how can you keep bringing yourself to the Lord, keep dedicating, keep offering. This is a huge blessing from the Lord. The more you dedicate yourself to the Lord and also your family, even your entire family to the Lord, then you will receive a huge blessing. That is that you will be valued according to the shackle of the sanctuary. That means that you will have a value. And this value is that God will confirm your core value. It's not saying that the woman value worth less than the men is because at that time the woman is not for making money. So that God give different person different kind of threshold. Maybe for the people in their prime time, men has a higher price, the children is lower. And for the poor person, maybe they can't even afford three shackle, or five shackle that they're still willing to dedicate themselves to the Lord, then God will see them, will value them from God's perspective to see your glorious value. He will strengthen, confirm your core identity. He will judge according to the shackles in the sanctuary. This shackle means it's judged according to God's presence, according to his sanctuary. You have a glorious value in front of God. And also these values are actually all pretty high. Please don't take it lightly. 50 shackle, 10 shackle, 3 shackle. It's actually a very high price according to their own age. Either it's a children or a young adult or in their prime time or all above 60 or poor people when they dedicate themselves to the Lord to let God rule over them. It's something that is truly valuable from God's eye. So the more that you offer, then the more this value will be manifested inside us. Sometimes we might feel like, oh, I'm such a worthless person. I'm just a family wife. I'm just a blue collar. I don't have a lot of education. I'm just a nobody. Compared to the people on the stage, the famous speaker, oh, they are so valuable in God's kingdom. But in chapter 27, even though the priests, of course, they are valuable, the descendants of Aaron, they are valuable, the leader from each tribe, they are valuable, but in chapter 27, there are a group of people who love God, and they want to dedicate themselves in front of the Lord. Even for the poor people, according to their ability, God will value them according to the shackle in the sanctuary. So even for them, God see them as invaluable. So we don't have to compare, we don't have to be jealous, or feel that we don't, can't compare with someone else as long as you keep dedicating yourself to the lord you can make this prayer today lord i will dedicate myself to you maybe i'm just a nobody maybe i'm just a youth maybe i'm the poor person but when i dedicate to the lord the priest is actually jesus jesus will judge will va do the valuation and this value is actually the price that he paid with his precious blood price that abba father says that it's worth him sacrificing his only son to, so that we he can purchase you back. This price is worthy for Jesus Christ to die for you. So that means you are extremely precious, extremely 
glorious. You are completely beautiful without blemish. So their families, this is chapter 27. This is the deepest heart of the Lord. Do you love me? If you love me, then can you dedicate yourself to me? I will value you according to the shackle in the sanctuary. And this value is worthy for the Son of God to purchase you back through his precious blood. It's very worthy. So this is the deepest desire of God's heart. And next from verse 9 to 30, 13 is to offer your animal. So this animal, when you offer it, it will all be holy. If you want to exchange them, then both of them will be holy. If it is any unclean animal, then he shall stand the animal before the priest, and the priest shall value it as either good or bad. If he wishes to redeem it, he shall add a fifth to the valuation. That means we offer our our belonging, our finance, to all be dedicated to the Lord, to offer in front of God, to give as we can, that everything will be regarded as holy in front of the Lord. Maybe you will say that, oh, recently, my faith is a bit weakened. I want to take it back. Or maybe I cannot do that much offering. Maybe recently the economy is not that good. And maybe in the past I was single, but now I'm married. I have a lot of kids. Maybe I was just had a layoff. So I have to take back some of my offering. Can I do some adjustment? Actually, God all accepted and he has so much mercy. And next from verse 9 to 13, he, he priest shall value it as either good or bad. And as a priest value it, so it shall be. So whatever thing when we bring to the priest, God see us holy and he has favor over it. He is delighted when we offer our finance to him to let him manage it. Some people will feel that, oh, I just do my tithing and the remaining 90%. I can just do my investment. I can pray and ask God for a blessing. But today there are a group of people, they truly love God. They don't just offer up the 10%, but they are willing to dedicate all their money to the Lord. Lord, may you manage my money. He lives a very frugal lifestyle, but for all the offering, donation to the lacking, to the needy, he is willing to give away. These kind of dedication truly touch God's heart and make God so satisfied. It's not for others, but a special vow that I want my money to be managed by the Lord. And next in verse 14 and 15, when a man dedicates his house, he desires God's indwelling. He wants God to stay there a priest shall value it as either good or bad. As the priest value it, so it shall stand. So God accept that whatever the priest value it, then it's so be it. Then God accept them. And if the donor wishes to redeem his house, he shall add a fifth to the valuation price and it shall be his. So these one fifth, that means, you know, for the offering, how can you redeem it back? For the previous five offering, none of them, we can redeem them, them back. But here, this is a special vow. So there is some wiggle room for us, you know, because God truly sees our hearts towards him. So whatever the priest value, then so be it. And you know, whatever God value for us, it will definitely be the best. But sometimes later on, we are weak. So then we says that we can no longer offer it, but God has no condemn about that. As long as you just add back additional one fifth, then God will accept it. So we should not take this special vow lightly. But as long as you are willing to make this special vow, God's heart is so heart passionately embrace whatever thing that you offer to him. And from verse 16 to 25, it's his land. This land means my job. So their families, I really encourage you to dedicate your job to the Lord, to work for the Lord, not for your boss, but for the Lord. Sometimes in the company, there will be some unhealthy uh, rules or maybe some immoral things. And maybe you stand firm for God. Maybe someone else will see you as strangers. And sometimes you will have some pressure from your peers. Maybe someone, they will try to kiss ass or maybe through some back door, then they become in a higher position and you just work honestly. And But it seems like the opportunity never comes to you. But we want to encourage you to dedicate your work to the Lord. Let God to take over your future, your promotion, your bonuses will all be in the hand of the King of Kings. So that means to dedicate your land to the Lord. Every day you seek God, you fear God, you truly do your job honestly. You don't just slack off. You don't do the go do the backdoor thingy. But and you know that as long as you are pleasing to God, then God will 
take full responsibility for your promotion in your job, and God's and man's favor on you will keep increasing throughout the history. The testimony from Daniel, from Nehemiah, from Ezra, and also many Christians. You only need to please the Lord. You don't need to please people. Please your boss through because of God. I'm willing to submit to the rule of the company. I'm willing to submit to the command from the boss. I will not go against the truth from the Bible. Then you can say that Lord, I dedicate my land to you. Led you to take over. Led you to manage it. So. So these four offering bring to the Lord. You can truly touch God's heart, and later on you can see that God has so many special caring for different people. And then in verse thirty to thirty three, there's another special vow. It's beyond the the five offering. That in the five offering, the sin offering is you can eat, and the guilt offering there's something you can eat for the peace offering. Mostly is the one who make the offering they can eat. But from verse thirty to thirty three, it's talking about. A special tithing. This is something that many of us might overlook. So the first tithing is that every year I'm offering my offering to the Lord is to help the church, is to for the Levites. And the second tithing is that during the feast of the Lord that I can give to my subordinates to the Levites. And the third tithing is every three years to give it to the Levite, the sojourners, the fatherless, and the widow. So tithing is not just for the tithing to the church, but God has a very clear arrangement to take care of the life of the Levite. Especially your pastor in your church, the full time minister, the full time、uh, serving brothers and sister, they need the provision, and also for the widows, for the orphans, for the sojourners, for the weak single parents, or or maybe for the elder who live alone, your tithing, additional tithing, is to help them. God all remember all these things. These are all the special vow in chapter twenty seven. So today, if you have a special vow that said, "Lord, I'm decided, I'm dedicated to serve you wholeheartedly. I will take care of the one who is orphan, who lives alone, who are weak, who is single parents. They have a difficult life. I'm also determined to take care of them." This special vow, God also see it. God remember that this is not a requirement from the rules, but it's. God opening His heart to us, say that Lord, if you love me, I encourage you, I invite you to have a portion, have a share in this thing, because this is what God will do. These all these three additional tithing is what God is doing. I take care of the Levites because Levi is my inheritance; I'm their inheritance, and I'll also take care of the land during the feast. I will take care of the slaves, and also take care of the Levites. I'll take care of the sojourner, take care of the widows and orphans. I will take care of them. I want you to walk with you. Are you? Willing to do that to make this special vow to take care of them with me. And the last verses, these are the commandments that the Lord commanded Moses for the people of Israel on Mount Sinai. So remember all the. Declaration announcement of the commandments is always after the grace. God always give us grace and then talk about the commandment. So it's always through God's grace that we can satisfy the requirement from the law. If we cannot immediately satisfy the requirement from the law through the offering, through the sacrifice that we dedicate ourselves to the Lord, He will satisfy the thing that He wants. But what He wants from us is a wholehearted. Fear and love towards Him. He wants us to draw near to Him, to know His will, and this love will truly satisfy us deep in our heart. So, chapter twenty-seven, their families. May we spend additional time to read it. And today, we can make this prayer. Lord, help me to dedicate me and my family to You. My finance, my housing, my inheritance, my property, all will be take over by You. If someone needs to be hosted for some travelers, Lord, I'm willing to offer. Open my house. I can host my small groups, host the、um, outreach event in my place. I can also host the. Pastor who travels, and I'm also willing to dedicate my work to you. That I can make this special vow. I'm willing to take care of the Levites, the orphan, the widows, the weak, the sojourners. I want to do whatever thing that you want to do. I want to touch your heart. This is chapter twenty-seven. He opens up his heart to us. Are you willing to respond to me? So today, shall we pray together? This is the end of the book of Leviticus because when we are reading these, is to help us to keep knowing that he. 
is the Lord our God, and we will know that we are His beloved. And so when we offer ourselves fully to Him, this is what He wants. He doesn't just want the oxes or the lamb. He doesn't want the sacrifice, but He wants me. He wants us to dedicate our heart fully to Him, be pleasing to Him. Amen. Dear families, we hope that you enjoy the Bible race as much as we do. If you are willing to volunteer to translate the original Chinese teaching into English or assist with video editing, please email service at three sixty sunrise dot com. Thank you.